What is going on, everyone, and welcome back to the Styles Exchange yet again. I'm your host, Ari. This is Mike. We're here today to review The Princess and the Scoundrel, the latest book in the Delray Star Wars collection. I'm super excited to review this one. First of all, thank you to Delray for sending us a copy of the book, as well as uh, the audiobook, all of that stuff. Super fun time reading this, and we're going to have a good time talking about it today. But first of all, Mike, how are you? I'm uh, I'm doing great, Ari. It's, this book is a lot of fun. Can't wait to dive into it. Um, and yeah, it's it's great to be back on the podcast. It's been a kind of a minute, but you know, just life happens, and and it's reading sometimes isn't easy. So it's it's you exactly. have to work reading reading into your schedule, and sometimes it takes ten pages a day, and sometimes it only takes five. But yeah, it's doable. So yeah, sorry for the delay, everyone. But yeah, we're back and. Uh, hopefully by now that you're watching this, you've you've read the book. Uh, and if not, go read it or something. You'll, you, yeah. You know what? We'll tell you. Uh, Ari, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Mike is the one that apologized, but it's more my fault the the delay on this show because it was taking yes. me a while to read it just purely because time was uh, at a loss for me the last few weeks. But uh, did get through it. Um, and yeah, keen to talk about it today. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's start talking about it, Mike. What do you have to say? Um, you know what? Before we before we get into the little book, I do want to say if you're listening to us on uh, any podcast platform, make sure you go to wherever, um, whatever you're listening on, on Audible, podcasting on Apple, Spotify. Go subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to us for more book reviews and also uh, rate us. Uh, that also helps us, you know, get to more people and. You know, it's always it's always nice when more Star Wars fans join the fun. So make sure you do all that. And if you're watching on YouTube, give that video a thumbs uh, a thumbs up and also subscribe because we are also going to be doing um, pretty soon. We're going to be covering Andor in its entirety and Bad Batch and and Tales of the Jedi. And we're just going to be so overworked and busy, but we're going to be craving and eating up all this Star Wars stuff. So make sure you join us for all that. So yeah, subscribe, guys. Don't go anywhere. And um, but yeah, I want to get it. into some non-spoiler um, stuff first because um, yep. so if you haven't read the book, we want to take like ten minutes uh, and just talk about non-spoiler stuff, uh, our overall thoughts on the book. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can go read it you know, without being spoiled, and then we'll get into yep. the more like um, heavy stuff. So all the spoilers, but we'll obviously give you a warning beforehand. So mm -hmm. overall non-spoiler thoughts. I thought this book was a lot of fun. I thought it did a lot of things well. Um, I think in, uh, you know, when this book was first announced, I think in unison, we all rolled our eyes and we were all like, oh, look, a, uh, I mean, you can see on the book cover, the Halcyon is lurking in the back. So we all in unison just rolled our eyes and we're like, oh, here's a, here's a, here's a little poster child for the, <laughs> for the Halcyon expensive hotel Star Wars experience in, in Orlando, Florida. Right. We all did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know what? For me, we could get into that later on the more spoiler stuff, but for me, um, this never felt like an ad. It, there was a moment in the story where you were on that cruiser and you were, you know, exploring some of the things that you've heard or seen about. Um, but overall, like it just it never took away from the actual story, uh, in my in my opinion. But also, this is a obviously what you can tell from the cover. This is a romance. This is a romance novel, but it never like it. And you know what? I'm not into all that stuff, but like. It was um, at the end of the day, I love what the book did with Han's arc, which I won't spoil here, but also Leia's arc, which I also won't spoil here. But I just loved what this book what did with them. It just made sense. Like it, it, it was um, genuine. Like it was all that. It was very authentic as well, where it was like I could totally see uh, George Lucas like taking on this approach or this angle post Return of the Jedi for both characters. Like it was that like that's how real it felt to me. And then um, there was like a whole bunch of emotional scenes. I mean, in this book, you know, Han and Leia get married. That's the whole point of the book um, mm -hmm. and, and how their relationship is post war and actually during the war, because um, the war is not over yet until uh, Battle of Jakku, which is still a year out from here. But like it was just I mean, overall, like just getting to know like their day, how their daily lives look like on the planning side of the battlefield or like when they get moments of peace and silence, like how that all looked and shaped up. It was just great. It, if anything, it just felt like an expansion of of their scenes in Empire Strikes Back together. Like it just felt that good. And then overall, like I just thought it was this book. Uh, there's a lot of Easter eggs in it. Um, so like pay tribute to a whole bunch of um, uh, Lost Stars, uh, freaking uh, Shattered Empire, uh, 
you got some like connections to like the aftermath trilogy like that was super cool so um it, it just made feel made it feel all connected with the books and such and i always love that and then overall it felt like a fantasy story maybe it's the cover uh bleeding into my perception but like the overall like story was just like it felt like to me like a, a magical like fantasy story set in the 1980s uh, you know, I just felt like I was probably watching some episode of like the Ewok movies or, or, you know, a little <laughs> clip from that. It just felt like, I don't know, maybe because they were on Endor in the beginning, but like, it just like gave me that like, um, feeling. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that, but you know what? Yeah. Are there a lot of major stakes in here? No, but that's okay. There's no major ramific ramifications for the era. Like there's just like no major stakes and that's okay. Like it was just fun getting into the boots of Han Solo and into the gowns of Princess Leia and just like chill with them for a little bit. So if you're, if yeah. you're, if you're a fan of either both characters, I'd, I'd suggest you read this book. Like it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Again, you get to, there's moments where Leia has uh, moments of reflection and you get to like see from her perspective, some of, some of the, major events that happened throughout the original trilogy right and and same with han solo i mean goodness he missed out a year it, you know and and this book explores that and i think people will really like that so um but that's just my take ari what are your non-spoiler thoughts uh are they similar overall do you recommend it to our little audience what do you think um look they're not similar and this book just didn't didn't cut it for me at, at all i I, I don't mean to be harsh, but <clears throat> it was just one of the first Star Wars books that I've read recently, at least, and just come away from it feeling like I just kind of wasted my time a little bit reading it. Like the, the fact of the matter is the book is split up into three pretty clear, distinct acts. And I would say the first act, the first about 15 chapters were fantastic. I was honestly loving the book so much. I thought everything that uh, Beth Revis was doing was fantastic. And by the way, my issues with the book are very separate from the author. So like, I, th I think she did a fantastic job with what she was given. Cause remember a lot of these authors are sort of given, you know, pretty clear instructions and then they sort of do what they can with it. I think she did a great job with what she had, but what she had wasn't, wasn't a lot. And it's not necessarily because there was, there wasn't any stakes. I just think overall the book just, yeah, it, it did feel like an ad. I'm going to say it really did feel like an mm. ad for the cruiser after, uh, you know, the first act, uh, I was expecting that, that sort of, uh, you know, the, the way that the characters were getting delved into, um, to continue, but it ended up just feeling like, yeah, it, it felt like an ad for the cruiser. And uh, pff, I don't know. I just, it, the book never sat well with me and I tried my very best to go in with an open mind. Like, but I, you know, I will admit that I did just immediately before I'd even read a word of the book have like, uh, you know, a bias to not liking it because of all the talk around it. But you know, there's it, not to say that there's nothing good about this book. As I said, the first, the first act is fantastic. Uh, I honestly loved it so much, but Everything past that, um, which, you know, the first act is pretty short. Everything past that just didn't land for me whatsoever. Um, I thought, you know, there were some good moments. A lot of, uh, get, I, I did enjoy the moments where we got into the um, into the heads of Han and Leia. I thought that was super interesting. Um, but overall, the actual events of the story just didn't hold up to the, to, to the amount that I kind of expected it would. And, I don't think you can write a whole story that relies on, you know, what, what, are, how are Han and Leia going right now? Cause we're all curious. We want to know that, but they felt like nothing was going on to back up that, you know? So overall, I didn't really have a, a great time with the book, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'm excited to talk more like in depth about why, but um, I don't know, but not to say don't read. I think the, the this book probably wasn't written for someone like me. Um, you know, it's a romance and not that I don't like romances, but, that was just not like that. That's not my like go-to genre specifically within Star Wars, but um, there's still some great romance stories within Star Wars. Heck, like you know, Padme, uh, Padme, Anakin, all that. That's within the movies, and we love all that stuff. But yeah, the this just one, this one just wasn't for me to be honest. But that's okay. I think, and I'm not, I'm not actually gonna say don't read it. I think, um, you know, if that romance side of Star Wars does intrigue you, then this is a book that you could, I could see people really enjoying. If you really love the characters of Han and Leia, I can see you really enjoying this book because this book really does do a good job of like 
going into the minds of those characters and if this whole era post um revenge uh, uh return of the jedi interests you then um that's another thing that i think could be make the book worth picking up but yeah it was it wasn't it wasn't for me this one all right uh can't wait to get into that discussion and i just <laughs> gotta say if you're not into this one we haven't uh yet reviewed shadow of the sith but what i love what del rey did this summer it's like they definitely took that like post which of the jedi world approach and like they were like okay if you're into Leia and han this is the book for you if you're into luke and lando's story shadow of the sith is the book for yeah you. yeah so you can sure. definitely there's different books out there that you can go on and read and you know what for all we're not into spoilers yet but i gotta say the audiobook was one of the most fun ones that i've listened to um yeah, it yeah. was like the the narrative so they had for the so they have in the way this book is set up is that they have by the way, look at this color. By the way, I, I love this color. But <laughs> yeah, the, the, the front this... cover of the book is actually oh really yeah, nice. I'm <laughs> telling you, look color. at that '80s. It, it just feels something like that you would see in like Star Wars Legends or something like that. That's a glorious cover. Yeah, but um, I mean, the audiobook was so much fun, and the way this book is set up, it like you know starts off with a prologue, and then it goes into Leia's chapter, then it goes into a Han chapter, and it just alternates the entire way through. Sometimes it works, yeah. sometimes it doesn't. But yeah. I will say, uh, the audiobook they had a male narrator for Han, and then a female uh, narrator for the um, for the Leia stuff. Amazing, and there's a there's a moment where it just like like two voices come together for something, and it's so good. It, it just read off like if I was listening to one of like one of the audio productions that they do, like Dooku Jedi Lost or the Doctor Aphra one. Or Tempest Runner, but I haven't, yeah. I haven't read that. But yeah, seriously, check out the audiobook. If you don't want to pick up the book, yeah. if you don't want to check out the book and you have a uh, membership with Audible, go for it. Go for the audiobook. It's just a fun listen, to be honest. Overall, fun book. But that's our take. That's a non-spoiler talk. Um, you can check out the video now. But if you want to listen to spoilers, if you've read the book and want to stay around, or if you're just curious what happened, now this is the part for you. All right, all right. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's. You said it. You said it yourself. There's the book is divided into three parts. Let's talk yeah. about the Andor stuff first. Um, what worked for you on Andor? Uh, not Andor. In Endor, Andor. You know, we're excited for Andor. By the <laughs> way, excited. subscribe oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on yeah. Endor. Um, yeah. What what stuff worked for you on Endor? What stuff didn't? And what were some of the highlights? Yeah, Endor was was the best part of the book. As I said, it, it didn't, it wasn't enough though, because that that probably took up the first maybe I want to say eighty or so pages as a rough mm -hmm. estimate. Um, everything there was fantastic. Just uh, for, like little moments stick out to me, like uh, uh, Han and Luke talking about how Leia and Luke kissed in uh, Empire, like stuff like that is just so fun. Um, I thought that was awesome. Um, but I think. Uh, that whole act like and en ended with the wedding, which I think the wedding was just like written so beautifully. Like I genuinely had goosebumps when I was reading it, and um, yeah, so I really loved that stuff. I I loved uh, the bachelor party for Han, the Ewoks invading it, make just causing absolute chaos, and um, I I think I just liked having you know Luke and Lando around as well. I think that that made the book uh, better. I I like just seeing the decision making to get married and like the whole just getting into the minds of those characters in this specific moment was really good. And I think the setting was great. The characters were great. And this is just where everything that was good about the book just stood out. So right. I did really enjoy a lot of that stuff. There was, um, yeah, uh, there was just nothing but good things to say about that. I liked what Han was trying to, Han's trying to become like a better man for Leia and that sort of thing. Leia's trying to become, you know, uh, less of a, less of a you know rebel leader and more of a partner for han and i just liked seeing that evolve and um and then it sort of the climax of that was the wedding which was which was beautiful as i said but what do you think of this of that first act Mike? yeah no i agree and i uh i especially loved that luke was there's a moment where leia was like oh shoot was luke gonna think even though they've only been brother and sister well at least to yeah, her mind yeah. for like yeah. a couple of days um and she's like worrying about what, what luke's gonna think and he's like oh finally you guys put it together like you guys are gonna get married and such so it's funny seeing that reaction and i mean the thing that stood out to me the most listen i love the wedding a lot and i thought it was very mm -hmm. funny the the way han was just in in the setting and i was like oh my god seeing han here feels so out of character but so in character uh for him and he was just like moaning and groaning about a lot of things and especially when the Ewoks were up to their antics. He's like, oh, what now? Like, it was just so funny. 
Um, yeah. But the the thing that I loved the most was uh, Leia stumbling upon Vader's funeral pyre and seeing like mm. no no Luke didn't he, he did not have a, a funeral for this guy the this mass murderer the guy who blew up Alderaan and I loved the way um, she there was just an emotional scene where she was like she was not gonna cry for him she was not gonna get angry for him but she did she did in fact get angry and she's like. And mm. she had that Anakin moment of like, I hate you. And I was yeah. like, that literally oh, gave yeah. me chills, chills and goosebumps and all that. Like I was just um, so encapsulated by all that. I was like, holy cow. So yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very good stuff that I think that deserves its own. Like if we were ever to do a breakdown video, I think that would be so much fun to talk about just because of how um, just how it, it made me feel and all that stuff and all the symbolism there. But it was very gut wrenching too. And, her saying that Bail Organa was her father and like she disowned Anakin mm-hmm. or whatever mm-hmm. Vader. She's like, you are not my father. So yeah, that was, uh, that was very, very, wow. That was just intense. And then of course, Ari mentioned when Ewoks and, uh, and oh yeah, I should say liquor and Ewoks are not mixed because the <laughs> brings chaos and so, fire. Honestly, and it that. sounds like they do. Yeah. I would love to, I would you love to what? get on with the Ewoks. You know, we have, we have a little wicked on, on the, here on this, um, YouTube, <laughs> on the YouTube display, but yes, I know I want to party with Ewoks. Now I used to be scared yeah. of them because of the way they were like eating stormtroopers or whatever. And like, I was like, Oh my God, these little teddy bears, like who knew they were so ferocious. And then also who knew that they would have a good time like that. I was, yeah, it, very intense. So, um, love that. We saw that side from them, but Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, I just, it's been a year since I read Lost Stars. It was the first book that I did uh, when I did my uh, book club. It was the first one we did because I think that's the, that's the Star Wars book that everyone should start off with, Lost Stars. Mm. Um, but like, there's a moment where Leia is dancing with Thane Kyrell and he's wearing like the band of remembrance or something or the morning band. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. He, and first of all, I love, love to Beth Revis. The fact that this is in here, this is like the, most like i mean the, i think the last time we got like a lost stars reference was like in the battlefront 2 game uh during one of the jakku missions you get you get to see like hear like people calling for thane kyrell or something but um yeah last time leia danced with thane i'm pretty sure was during uh some ball on coruscant in the um in the in the imperial palace so now seeing that here where she's dancing with him again and now he's on the you know rebel side whatever i was like oh my god like it just everything came full circle and i just like totally ate that up like pretty sure i mm. sobbed a little inside but that was that was a really cool moment but yeah the wedding was was great i love the symbolism with the rings and stuff um and yeah the, it, i think the Endor stuff was really like if, if the book just stopped after that i mean i really like the other stuff too like the halcyon stuff but like i mean that was just perfect like that was chef's kiss perfect i loved yeah. all all of it and like i said in the in the previous bit, I did love all the connections to the aftermath comic. Uh, I mean, we yeah. got the Dameron, the Dameron couple in there. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, that was that was pretty epic. And seeing what how everyone was doing post Return of the Jedi, or I'm sorry, post Battle of Endor, that was also fun. So yeah, it was it was yeah. kind of cool digging into what Ma Mothma was up to, Lando, and everyone felt like it just felt like we were picking right up after Return of the Jedi. So that was really fun. Yeah. No, there was a lot of good connections to, like, other EU. And that's why I credit Beth Revis. And I want to see her write, like, you know, her own her own Star Wars story. Or, like, get be offered, you know, to write a more expansive story that doesn't revolve around, you know, um, Disney's hotel. Um, but, yeah, because if, if you just took the end or part of the book and made that a short story, I would be sitting here just talking about how, how much, you know, how, how good it was and whatever. And, yeah, so uh, my, as I say, my, my issues with the book, I, I feel bad not, I, I want to enjoy it because, you know, Beth Revis is a great author, but um, just didn't happen. But yeah, Endor stuff was fantastic. But let's uh, let's talk about the second sort of section of the book, which revolves around the Halcyon. Han and Leia are kind of off doing their own things. Uh, we get a lot of good advertisement for the hotel here. Um, <laughs> we get to meet the captain we get to see the schematics of the ship all sorts of stuff and yeah this is this is where the book just started to slowly fall apart for me because and i I could i could feel it from chapter in my notes i wrote chapter 12 to 13 i could feel immediately as soon as we got off endor and the halcyon stuff began 
I immediately start to lose interest in the book because I felt like it, it, it seems like it, people might think it's just, it's too easy to be like, Oh, nice. And ad. like, that's a very easy, like critique, but that was just the honest truth. And I felt like, um, I felt like there, there was no way that Beth Revis was going to write this book without, without doing those moments. So once again, it's, it's nothing to do with her, but there was just, it, it just didn't, it didn't feel right to me. And there's, there's not much more I can really say than it just truly didn't feel right. There were moments within, you know, the Halcyon section that I did quite enjoy. I thought, you know, Han thinking of Kira for a brief moment. That was cool. Kira even got brought up again later. Um, I liked, I did like the, the little gambling section with Han, you know, just even as I was saying earlier, just further exploring Han and Leia's consciousness, seeing what's going on with them um, and how they're dealing with social situations now compared to how they would have in the past. Um, so there was, there was still good stuff here. And I think, um, yeah, there just wasn't a lot of like substance in the, in the plot um, into what was going on because there, for a long time I was like, what, what are we actually doing in this book? Like what, what's the point of all this? And I think at the end of the day, I just kept coming. I just kept being annoyed that this, this book was ever um, written, but you know, I, I think Mike and I were actually talking earlier about how, you know, we, neither of us have read the galaxy, the book for galaxy's edge. So, you know, I've heard good things about, it. I'd be curious to see how like a book like that, that's written purely to, you know, attract people to, to galaxy's edge, like in Disneyland, how that would stack up compared to this one. I think this one is definitely a tougher task, but um, yeah, I don't know the whole section. There was, there was good things, but overall, everything for me was just overshadowed by the simple fact that not a lot was going on and everything seemed to just revolve around this hotel, which, and you know, the fact that they even went to a hotel for their honeymoon. I mean, I could go on all day about this, but no one wants to hear that. So Mike, what did you, what do you think of this second act on the Halcyon? Um, no, nah, for me, uh, yeah, I, I was one of the skeptical people being like, oh, just like I said, I rolled my eyes. I was like, oh my God, like they're doing this They're This is the little ad for Halcyon. But like, I was actually, I thought the, the Halcyon would play a much more important. I mean, it does play an important role, but I thought that we were going to be on here since the get go. Like it was going to be like two chapters on Endor and then get thrown on the Halcyon. And I thought the way the author, uh, you know, Beth Rabbis, I thought the way that she integrated the Halcyon in the story was really well done where it didn't feel so forced. Um, I mean, like, I mean, you, if you read the story, you know that the whole reason Leia ends up on this is because of Mon Mothma basically being like, here, I want you guys, I want, you deserve a break, you deserve a, a proper honeymoon, because this entire time Mon Mothma on Endor was working with the elders of, of the Ewok tribe, trying to have a, like an official like wedding for Leia. And it kind of just it for me it like really highlighted how Mon Mothma just runs like while well, she's like this political person and head figure she's also like an endearing friend where it's like oh like I just want you know thank you for all that you've done for the galaxy really Leia so I want you to have the best time and I loved her even her moments with Han but she basically you know convinces both of them to get away and Han is down but Leia's kind of like I know like a vacation right now like I'm needed here on the front lines and all that. And ultimately, uh, Mon Mothma does like this spin where it's like, here, uh, you this is more think of this as a mission, but you also get to relax at a at a as, at a hotel. So then Leia's like, all right, like I'll, I'll do it. So I like seeing that struggle with Leia that she wasn't like so down uh, on it. Like first, like okay, like I'm gonna go. That would have felt so. It would have felt like if we were playing with like with toys and being like, oh my god, we just got like this new ship. Like let's force. Or like this new like um, I don't know like we got like some other asset to the little to the little toy box and we're like oh all of a sudden the characters have to go to that new ship just because I just bought it from Walmart or something you know it didn't feel like that at all it felt like it felt uh, to me it felt very authentic um, and then the Halcyon stuff of course you're gonna get like uh, you know oh here Han and Leia like in the actual hotel like oh here you can see where Han and Leia scribbled their initials in because you know whatever. Um, or, oh, here we, if we go down the hall, we're going to run into this room where you can like take a breather. You know, it's like, we, I knew all this. We all knew all this. If we read galaxy's edge, it's going to do the same thing where if you go down this smart, we're going to run into this market. And if we go down this way, we're going to run into the, into the blue milk stem. We know this, we know this. So that's exactly what I was expecting here. We got it. Um, the only thing that I did actually like roll my eyes at where I was like, all right, that's way too on the nose 
was when Leia was giving a given a, a tour of the bridge and she was like, Oh, are th- you know, the other guests allowed up here? And the captain was like, No. She's like, I want them to be like, they should all get to experience this. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know oh we all gosh. get to if we pay our five thousand dollars to get aboard this cruiser, we know we'll also get a tour of the of the of the bridge. So we get it. We get it. Yeah. But like to me, it just worked. Um, I like that the, uh, the they eventually got off the Halcyon, but we'll talk about that later. But at least for here, like there was things going on for me that I was just interested in, like Han and Keylad and and the way he was just upset that or the way he uncovered like some little plot that wasn't actually going to happen from this guy. Um, and then Leia was talking to all these like citizens. And uh, this place really reminded me of like um, Cantobite. That's what it was. Cantobite. Uh, where you have all these people like stuck up mm. in their own business. They're so entrapped in yeah. here that they have no idea what's going on on the outside galaxy, nor do they care. And Leia stumbled upon some people where they were like, oh my God, my son fought in the Imperial Navy and he was killed at the Death Star or whatever. And yeah. then she met another yeah. person who didn't believe that the Emperor was dead. So like for me, mm. the house dance stuff was really cool. And then we also got like a cool Leia moment. And this is part of her arc in the story of her in, in pursuing that path of being a Jedi or not. And there's a moment in the next segment that we'll talk about, about her with the force that I thought was going to happen, but didn't, but here where she got like to uh, meditate and, and, and really like set down that path. Like I want to be a Jedi. That was really fun. And yes, it did happen in, in one of the rooms that you can experience <laughs> oh the Halcyon. But, but for me again, um, mm. it, it was just to me, it's also seeing Han, while Leia was busy doing all this, playing politi- politician and playing this figurehead in front of the cameras, seeing Han just being like, I have nothing else to do than like lay in bed or like, let me go explore. Let me go down to the cafeteria and get something to eat. That was just like, that was actually just fun to watch him walk around and, and read about all that. So Halcyon stuff, that all worked for me. I mean, um, am I missing anything here? Uh I, can, yeah, I, can I just go to one of your points that you were just saying? Something yes. I re- did really enjoy, you know, because you are right. It was very similar to the Canto Bite arc in um, The Last Jedi, which feel how you will about that arc. I, I, I like that story. I shouldn't have been in that movie, but that's a whole other discussion. Oh, but no. So it, <laughs> it was nice to... Uh, I, I like The Last Jedi. Let's, let's not talk about it, though. <laughs> um, anyway... Uh, my point is that this this story did feel like a very appropriate place to talk about that sort of thing. So I did enjoy that. And um, kind of seeing how I think it, it's in Leia starts to think, oh, these people, they, they really could not have cared less if we if the Rebels won or the Empire won. They'd be here celebrating either way, you know, like just because that's they're, they're greedy and selfish and that no matter who wins, they just want to be on the winning side type thing. So I did really right. enjoy that. And um yeah it's a great it's a great parallel because i think they that it did get to kind of expand on what was introduced in canto bite um so i did really enjoy that but as you're saying with like all the oh like maybe we should go to the bridge and and whatever like i didn't i actually didn't even know that until you've just said that that that's like a thing like that that's why that was written which just makes me <laughs> but you know what anyway, i will uh, say yeah. sh- shout out shout out to beth Ravis for the one yeah. thing that intrigued me that i le- just learned about was um mobsters from chicago new york they would all travel to california of the united states and they would all travel there and buy cruise ships and they would um s- they would s- turn them into casinos and they would sail them out of the territory of California. So so the having a casino out there was legal and they didn't have to pay taxes. And in here, we learned that uh, crime lords were known to buy like these type of cruise ships and turn them into a traveling cas- casinos. And then we learned like the whole history of like this ship was owned by the Huts and all that stuff. So I was like, it was, it was like, I just had to mention that because it just happened so randomly yeah. like a week before i started reading this book i learned about that about mobsters from chicago new york uh i forgot where wherever else but uh maybe boston but they would all travel to california buy these cruise ships and turn them into like traveling casinos and then you know they would have <laughs> to pay taxes or do any of that and it was legal and that's what they were doing here i was like what that was crazy so yeah. um had to mention that fun fact for the day uh but yeah, yeah. uh halcyon stuff i liked sorry I, sorry i, I just <laughs> no i like once again it's like there's there's a lot of good stuff in this book that I, i'm not going to deny like i really enjoy aspects of the book you know bits that we're talking about but like 
yeah, overall, like it just when I just think of the Halcyon stuff, I, I love a bit of corporate synergy in Star Wars, but this is just corporate synergy on on steroids. Like it's just I it's too you. much. It's, it's just it's it's unnecessary. It's you, just... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Most people wouldn't find that funny, but like. Ari, when we were doing Mandalorian, he said something like that. And I just started hearing <laughs> corporate synergy come out of this man's mouth. Just makes me laugh. But I'll tell you something. When you me know, and Ari you know, are you eventually know invited to, when me and Ari are eventually invited to the Halcyon Cruiser, he'll be singing a different tune. But we'll let you know though. We'll let you guys know then. <laughs> no, no, no. We we had a friend. You know, our friend Chelsea went to oh Chelsea um the to the Halcyon, and you know they they had a great time and. But you know they they would still if if they were here right now they would um sit and tell you all that yeah it's 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 fun but it's ridiculously expensive all that sort of stuff so shout out to Chelsea yeah. but yeah, to Chelsea. I shouldn't speak for them they can they can speak for themselves <laughs> Chelsea we leave gonna... a comment and, and tell us your thoughts <laughs> Chelsea's always yeah. in the comments and by the way side yeah. note we want to have Chelsea on schedules in a line but I wanted their perspective of reading this book. And then visiting the cruiser, like that would have been a fun for you guys. But we'll we'll do something like that later. But there you go. There's the story. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the Halcyon section. Not a lot more to say about that. Now moving on to for some reason the the what the books kind of concluded with. <laughs> I don't know how we got to this point, but <laughs> Leia is trying to decode a, a hidden message within um a prime minister from this art planet. And uh, yeah, her and Han go there, and they they you know find out that the Empire still has a hold on them. They're trying to um, steal all their resources and stuff. And uh, you know Han and Leia come in, save the day. And this was really like like even though the stuff on the Halcyon I didn't enjoy because of you know a lot of that corporate stuff. I you know the stuff within it was was okay. It was it was like it was enough to keep me reading. And then it did feel like a bit of a grind to get through this, this yes. act here because there was a lot of chat, like in my notes, I, there was a chapter where I wrote down, I, I couldn't think about what else happened besides Han was cold. I think it was just a chapter of Han complaining about how cold it was on the planet. I was just, it ended up just, mm, it didn't, it didn't go down well for me. I, I don't want to harp on it too much though. Cause I don't have many like good things to say about it, but what the good stuff within there was, I thought, you know, once again, loved going into the minds of Han and Leia. I thought there was still some good stuff. Leia coming to grips with, you know, Leia be, uh, with Vader being his uh, her father and um, all that sort of stuff. I thought was was good, but overall, it just yeah, I think it just fell flat for me. But what what did you think? Yeah, pass the mic over to me because I I, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I just I had fun with this, but like you, it felt more of like. A drag to read through just because it's like I, I was telling Ari before we hopped on uh on this call to record this in this conference room. Um <laughs> I was so I'm so tired of hearing the word Madeiras, Madeiras. It's just in my, ingrained in my brain now. But like yeah. there is like such an ominous feeling to this final setting. And I love that because there was like a looming presence of like that black tower and like there's a character of uh Nahai. And she wouldn't look at it. And it's like, what is going on? Like, why not? Like, what's yeah. what's up there? What's going on? And we all knew that. I mean, if you look at the cover, there's stormtroopers, for God's sake. Like, you can see the stormtroopers yeah. on there. So it's like, okay, because there's no action uh, it, at all in this book until, like, the final chapters. And it, it just goes so heavily that you're, like, trying to keep up with it. And there's so much things happening that you're like, what just happened? But I'm like, I'm just going to keep reading through anyway, because I just want to get through this part already. Um, but like, th I like the looming presence of it, but it just took way too long to get to. And I thought I was just like, every time they yeah. would talk to Prime Minister Jens, I was like, yeah, just get to it. We know that the Imperials are here too. What's the cover up? Like, I want, I think it it like dabbled in that too long where it's like, like, ooh, like not a whodunit particularly, but like a, uh. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the equivalent of that is here, but it was just so, I just wanted to get to the mystery already rather than we just kept getting teased and teased and teased. And it just, after a while, I just got tired of it. I'm like, we know there's stormtroopers here and we, you know, it's the, the author has no say in the cover. So I'm sure that we want, <laughs> she wanted us to find out like surprisingly, Oh my God, the Imperials are here, but also yeah. if you have been keeping up with, I don't know anything Star Wars besides the movies. 
you know that the Empire didn't die after Return of the Jedi. So it's like, this was the moment. I like that they got this moment of being like, we already knew this, but here we're here experiencing it, that they have this still large looming presence on the galaxy. And very, if they were able to escape here or whatever and do what they did to this planet to others, we are going to be in another war for the rest of our lives, basically. So I love that they had this moment of like, we need to put them down and we need to act now. Love that. Also, I don't know, Ari, did it remind you of Gore, the planet at Gorse from A New Dawn, where like they like the Empire was doing like, something similar where they basically they were like carving onto the and I haven't read all of A New Dawn, but I remember it being so mining, heavily mining focus where like the planet was starting to collapse because the Empire had just abused the heck out yeah, of it. Right. So um, I, I haven't read A New Dawn for like six years, so <laughs> my memory well, is not great on. But yeah, uh, it yeah it it just felt so like it you know you, you say like yeah that you know that planet in New Dawn it it did just feel like something we would just seen over and over. Oh, like the Empire are trying to strip the planet of its resources, and right. I know I know like the, the the twist here was meant to be like oh like the Empire is still a looming threat or whatever, but. It just felt like that there the, the thing with being like, you know, a crazy Star Wars fan like Mike and I, and I'm sure a lot of people listening to this, is when you like consume so much of the media, that some of the stories that get told are, are repeated. And that's not necessarily like a bad thing because, you know, a, a lot of people aren't they're not gonna go and you know, for example, the, the most recent example is kind of uh in Obi-Wan with Vader, his helmet getting like slashed. A lot of us had already seen that sort of be played out because we consume all of the stuff. But then for a lot of people, they're seeing that for the first time and that's awesome. So for someone who maybe doesn't consume so much Star Wars, if they read this book, they'd be like, oh, like, that's cool. And I haven't really thought about that, you know, which is right. cool. But then at the same time for people like us, it's just, it feels really repetitive, but um, that's kind of our own fault. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know who's at fault for, for that because you can't expect them to not repeat, you know, certain storylines or whatever but um yeah it was it just didn't do it for me what do you think of that though um yeah i said i agree i mean the, the i i felt like it was same but different here just because it was like we haven't really seen like the planet being abused post it post like battle of endor where it's like wow we destroyed the death star 2 or the second death star like what now and they know they're still in for bad months of battle but they were like we didn't know they were out here like this and there was also like a spin on it that i like that makes it different from all the other cases leia was like wait if there's an if there's a commander here who are they reporting to if the emperor and vader are dead who's out there yeah. and it kind of reminded me of mandalorian with moff gideon like who is he uh uh you know ta in talks with who is he um you know subjugated to so it was like here it was like it did for a second like just not lose me but like entrance me if anything of just curiosity like who are these people and i mean you can sum up to like admirals and grand admirals but it just for a second because i i keep saying that this book feels like a a fantasy story set in the 80s <laughs> i was just like there's so many possibilities out there that they could do anything i don't know it was just a silly moment for me but Seriously, I like that that little spin because it gave it um, a much uh, larger worldview than like the use, you know, oh, we're used to seeing like Jetta and like, uh, you know, like the planet Gorse I just mentioned from a new dawn or Lothal. Like we've all seen that, heard that a hundred times. But I thought that yeah. that little twist with with Leia being like, wait, who are they responding to? Who are they? Who are they taking orders yeah. from? That's the moment where I was like, oh, shoot, it made it stand out. So anyways, um, yeah, that's that's my thought on on the little mining stuff. But. I mean, yeah, the Black Tower stuff, I was a little confused because, I mean, I know I don't know how accurate the picture is on the cover, but they're talking about that it was once a space station, and then now it crashed, and they brought it, the people from Maduras brought it down. So I was a little confused by all that. Um, I'm not really sure where to make all that. I will say, I was so annoyed. I Halcyon stuff with Mon Mothma, I bought an A. I was like, yep. That you, Beth Ravis, you did an amazing job with all that stuff. I thought the story was just feeling very organic there. What didn't feel organic was when Han and Leia were on the bridge, and they're like, Leia was so keen on coming to this planet, and somehow conven conveniently, <laughs> she convinces the captain to travel to Madurs. And I, yeah. it just felt so cheap for me. It's like, oh, we're headed here now. It's like, okay, 
it just yeah. seems so out of it just it didn't seem genuine at all it just yeah it just felt like well i have this on my notes for this plot point we have to get there but other than that like i thought the the whole symbolism here of of beauty and peace with with the ice like melting and whatever and always breaking i thought that was the theme of like yeah. nothing lasts forever like that in terms of beauty and um and art and um and peace and all that i thought i, I that was great because Han and Leia, the middle of battle, Han literally just led this whole uh, strike team on the space on Endor or whatever. And now he's having like this little moment of peace. And it's like, they both know that's not going to last forever. So I thought this, uh, yeah. the the Madura stuff was a perfect like allusion to uh, all the stuff that's, or metaphor that, that they're actually going on, that's actually going on for them in their, in their battle lives. So I was like, oh shoot. Like I was just, okay, that's really cool. So um, other than that, though, Madurs, I mean, we had that one admiral or captain back or something, and she appeared in a previous Han and Chewbacca story in one of like the 2015 novels before The Force Awakens. Um, I thought that was cool. I There's just history there where I'm like, I wonder if, and I, I never read this story, but I went and looked it up and it was, um, she had appeared in like a Han yeah. and Chewbacca. Some it was adventure. one of those short like, stories that came out yep. in like the journey to Force Smugglers Awakens. Run. I also, yeah, that's it. I did a bit of research on that as well. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. And and there's moments here where, um, you know, Han is in the cold and stuff, and he has like some PTSD moments going on, being like, I hate the oh, cold. Yeah. Like I that hate was feeling good. that. That was, good. that was really good. And again, like I said, if I mean, if you're watching with spoilers and you're like, okay, I just want to see what's going on, I would say. We we won't do it justice here, but like the arcs that uh, both Leia and Han endure in this book, it's really good. It's really good. Like I've, it's one of the more better arcs that the characters, uh, it like one of the OG characters endure in one of these novels. Like Han is is fighting his like, uh, um, you know, we're exploring his posts uh, in Carbonite life. I can't even believe that Return of the Jedi never explored or had a moment where Han was like. Oh my god! Like I just lost a year of my life. Yeah. Or like asking took, people what happened in the last it, year. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly what happened because Han doesn't know about the whole Vader sitch. Like he just doesn't know anything. So it's like, why did we never have those moments in Return of the Jedi where Han was asking questions? So here yeah. he's asking questions. Leia tells him stuff, uh, you know, about her uh, parentage and stuff, and and Han is starting to be like, huh, wow, putting pieces together. But he lost a year of his life. So he he's fighting with that and being like, wow, like I literally just came back and everyone is Luke's a Jedi Knight. Leia's a, a, a top leader in the rebellion now, like or as she's mm -hmm. been, but now even like um, to more of a degree. And I'm just here. So he just has like a kind of like a crisis with himself and then Leia with the whole Jedi stuff. Like, yeah. And and also there's a the book talks about like, um, what would you call it? The uh Di dichotomy within Leia's life like she's um you know she's believed in like uh unions and alliances and stuff but however like she's one that isolates herself and then like uh the book goes on to say like the more independent she became the less likely she was to her others including herself and I was just mm. like oh like so she also has that struggle of like like she's all for that union and bringing people together but like she likes to be alone and stuff and that that was echoing that moment in Return of the Jedi where she learned about Luke being her brother and she just wants a moment to herself and Han gets mad and stuff. And it's just like, oh, like it just brought everything together for me. Um, so, yeah, I don't the Madur stuff there. I like the action with the the cruiser, the Halcyon, where Han and Leia were intentionally breaking that escape pod so they could get a repair pod down. That was really cool. I like the um, what was that one? The Nautilus name. Um What's his name? I really liked his character. I thought he was a very a, a cool standout. I forgot what his name is. Zama or Zama? Something like that. Zama? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But, yeah. but that one Nautilus guy, I loved him. He was, and he even stood back on, on Madur's uh, after they all left. And he just stood there and he's like, I will watch over the planet or whatever. I was like, oh, this guy, hero of the yeah. book. So I really <laughs> love that character. And um, shout out to uh, Key Lad, who built an oscillator there oh, I don't know yeah. <laughs> but it ended up the, the empire ended up using it for star killer base or first order yeah. that technology i just so i did not love that key led character i don't know why it just he was a pest i think the uh the because of the voice on the audiobook i just 
naturally just did it was gravitate toward it because as, lo- as much great. as I love the audio book, the, and I think this is actually a good thing more than a bad thing. It, I think he is meant to be that annoying guy. So whoever, was it Mark Thompson that did the audio book for the, uh, no, it was not Hunter. Mark. It was, I forgot what the other guy is, but yeah. Whoever it was did the key lad voice so well that it made me physically irk at how annoying the character was. But yes, what are, what are your what are your summarizing thoughts on the book? And any any final things you want to add on? Yes, um, like I said, as you heard in this discussion, there's no big stakes. It's just supposed to be a, a little side adventure, a side quest, if you will, with these two characters. And yeah, I mean, overall, is it a book that I? Well, actually, I don't revisit many books, but is this a book that I'll, I'll be keen on revisiting? No, maybe all the Ender stuff that I'll read. I'll like, I can't wait to go back and read, reread all that stuff. I mean, we, we learned some really cool things and there's a lot of Easter eggs in here that I haven't even picked up on. I'll, you know, the, I mean, Han gives Leia the ring that we see in Force Awakens yeah, um, yeah. as the actual wedding ring. So I was like, oh my God, that's so cool learning about yeah. because I had that moment of like, wait, were these two ever even married? Like, did they ever mention in the films, like Force Awakens or in one of the books? Don't know. But they said it here and she has that ring. So it's like, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take the ring. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of cool things here, especially uh, exploring post-Return of the Jedi. You get, you get to dabble in that. I mean, um, if you really want post-Return of the Jedi stories, I really recommend Alphabet Squadron. Like, that is just my favorite trilogy from the books um so far it would be the high republic ones but uh fallen star (laughs) but um (laughs) but anyways yeah overall i would say that this book is it was just fun it was there was a lot of cool moments in here a lot of quotes that wrote down that han and leia had said and it was just i think it was very character focused if anything um were some moments like distracting and long and and aggravating sure but you know what i had a good time with it um do i give my score yet or is that later yeah, give you a score. Give you a score. I would give this a book a seven out of ten. So there you go, Ari. Now we know you hated this book. No, no, no I definitely kidding. did not hate it. Definitely did you, not hate you it. You were you were definitely not one of the Ewoks parting with this book, right? You were just yeah. one of them. You were more key lad. You were the yeah. key lad. You took no, the key lad approach. Key-led, not key-led. <laughs> I think ultimately the book's just not for me, and that's fine. Like yeah. I think a lot of people will find enjoyment out of it, and that's great. Um, and I, I hope people do like the book. I'd be really curious curious to hear um, the general consensus because I I really have not heard a lot of takes outside of outside of just talking to Mike about it. So <clears throat> let us know in the comments like what you did think. But you know, I do usually actually like the low stakes character focused stories, which was partly why i was looking forward to obi-wan but obviously that didn't really eventuate but i do like those like really deep character focused stories and like yeah i don't know this time it just didn't work the the character stuff was good but the low stakes in the the plot just like you can have low stakes but it needs to the story still needs to flow and it just feel like it didn't and the stuff with the house yon just really held the book back which is why i feel bad for beth revis i want to see her write another star wars book which is less um constrained to um you know the corporate world but uh yeah overall some really good stuff in here genuinely some really good stuff um if you're a fan if you're a fan of han and leia specifically like their romance then then i would check it out um but if you have a bunch of star wars books on your reading list i would not be putting this anywhere near the top um (laughs) so yeah my overall rating probably like five at best like it's just it's just not for me but yeah, let us know what you guys think. Thank you so much for listening to this discussion. Um, Mike, any any last words to yeah, cap it off? With, uh, the next book that we'll actually, well, first let us know what you thought of the book, if you read it, and if you didn't, does this book interest you? Yes or no? Um, but yeah, let us know. And again, thank you to Del Rey for sending us not only a physical copy of the book, but an audio copy, which made the experience all that more enjoyable. Our next Thank book, um, I don't know what our next book will be, but um, if I, you guys really like these book discussions, so we appreciate you. We like talking about the books and comics because not really, you, you know, there's there's an audience for them out there, and there's a there's a fan base, but not the big fan base that we have here that we could yeah. talk ad nauseum about it. But yeah, let us know what you guys thought about the book, or if this book is uh, something that you put on your book list. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Um, Please, again, we said at the top of the show, we are going to be reviewing Andor soon. And then along that comes Bad Batch. And 
and and tales of the jedi and all that so make sure you subscribe yeah all this stuff so join us for the party we're literally going to turn it up uh ari's bringing the liquor i'm bringing (laughs) all the uh and when i say liquor i don't mean actual liquor but the one (laughs) i don't know the ones that the ewoks use and then i'll be the ewok and we'll just have an absolute party um so make sure you join us uh for all that you do not want to miss out um, for our coverage and all the people that we'll be talking to and getting their perspectives on the and or and all that so uh join us for that and uh, if you like book reviews reviews subscribe as well anyways um ari uh where can the good people here follow you on instagram and all that stuff yes find me on instagram at star wars underscore exchange awesome and uh you guys can find me all underscore star wars on instagram and twitter And until next time, guys, may the force be with you. Adios. See ya.